Life in Rannoch is very quiet. It's uh, it's a beautiful area. But Rannoch is a it's a very personal place too. Not a big population, but lovely wildlife, beautiful landscapes, and uh, I love it. I've known it since 1970, and love it a bit. This is entirely the wrong place for a wind farm. These are the mountains Scotland is renowned for. Wild, rugged, hostile and serene in equal measure. They're filled with space and time and can cure or revitalise in a way doctors can only dream about. Scotland's mountains offer opportunities for thinking in a fast-paced world. Achievement and self-improvement with every step taken or ridge traversed. The views are immense, even in the worst of winter. A trip to the mountains allows us to hit the reset button, fold away all our laundry and start afresh. There are over 160 onshore wind farms in Scotland. They range in size from individual small-scale turbines to large-scale sites such as Whiteley, which powers hundreds and thousands of homes and businesses. As this map shows, there are few places where the shiny white windmills can't be seen from. From the islands to the lowlands, it's as if the old Caledonian pines of centuries ago have been replaced by a new forest of metal trees. A 67 turbine farm was approved at Stronlerg near Fort Augustus in June 2014. This is in the Monolith Mountains, a well-known walking and climbing area. If we build a few more wind farms of this size, then the last wild spaces in Scotland will be gone forever. There are two forces at work here, both seemingly far more powerful than the glaciation that created our mountains in the first place. The first is our need for a secure energy regime, where power is produced that is clean, green, efficient and not at the mercy of other nations and governments around the world. The Scottish Government has taken a lead here and its targets are ambitious. Its 2020 route map for renewable energy in Scotland established a target to meet an equivalent of 100% demand for electricity from renewable energy by 2020. This is a target they are well on course to achieving. The roadmap update published in December 2013 states that the government wants to see a range of renewable technologies developed across Scotland. However, at the moment, the renewable sector in Scotland, as well as our horizons, are dominated by onshore wind. The second force at work here is those who want to keep our landscapes natural for plant and wildlife to grow and where nature is allowed to be the deciding factor in how the landscape evolves. Organisations such as the John Muir Trust, the Mountaineering Council of Scotland and national park authorities all work to care for and help protect the environment for people and wildlife. The John Muir Trust has been a vocal opponent of many wind farm projects in Scotland. Wild land is the key issue for many wind farm proposals as these are often the windiest places in Britain. Recently, Conservative MSP Murdo Fraser secured and led a debate on objections to the proposed Talavay wind farm in Rannoch. There were about 40 members of the public in the gallery, but far fewer MSPs. The most telling point of the debate was made by Michael McMahon, MSP, who said, If a developer was to suggest building a multi-storey building taller than Glasgow's Red Road Flats on Rannock Moor, they would get laughed out of any planning committee. During the same debate, Rob Gibson, MSP, asked why local people shouldn't benefit from the development of natural resources such as wind power. Examples of this type of fund can be found around the country. Through the Griffin Wind Farm, which started producing electricity in 2012, more than £392,000 is provided per year to community and charitable projects in the Aberfeldy, Dunkeld and Kenmore areas. Grants already given to community and charitable projects include £100,000 towards the cost of the redevelopment of the Burke Cinema in Aberfeldy, by 2037, it is expected that £9.8 million will be invested in local projects. In total, this comes to more than £1.2 million so far invested in projects that would otherwise have had to look elsewhere at scarce council or trust grants. The question is, do we want more renewable energy or a more industrial look to our wild land? Aventis, a Dutch company, want to build a 24-turbine farm on the Talavea estate near Rannoch Moor. 
This is an area of outstanding national beauty and inside an area designated as wildland by the Scottish National Heritage Wildland Map. The plans have united a host of opponents such as the John Muir Trust, the Mountaineering Council of Scotland and a local campaign group Keep Rannoch Wild who are vociferously against the proposals. I think very few people are hostile to wind farms in principle or to, to wind renewables in, in principle, very, very few. Tullaway plans uh, obviously uh, arise from the, the subsidy regime, but the, the subsidy driven incentives are so enormous that I can understand why estate owners would, would want to uh, take advantage of them. There are two major problems with, with this particular site. One, it's beautiful and should be cherished uh, for landscape purposes. It's just near to Ben Alder and Loch Erecht. And the second is that it's uh, an area of stunning wildlife, in particular young eagles, breeding eagles. This wind farm, if it is built, would totally dominate the, the, the track going up into wild country. It, it, would, it would make it no longer wild, it would industrialise the views. Uh, and there would be what are called community benefit payments, which uh, I consider to be simply legalised bribes to the community. It is a site too far, it's, it's in entirely the, the, the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And yet, there are communities in Scotland who have embraced the opportunities presented to them by wind power. Driven by a wish to improve their village, the Fintry Development Trust took advantage of proposals by Falk Renewables to build a 14 turbine wind farm nearby. They convinced the developers to build a 15th turbine for the benefit of the community. Many in the village of Fintry have had their lives improved through the various schemes and projects that the Trust has implemented using the income generated from that extra turbine. Fintry is quite a small village, um, there's about 500 folk in it and about 300, 350 sort of properties and it has the same kind of problems that any kind of village has, a rural area, um, you know, employment for local people and for young people, where do they go, what do they do, transport is pretty poor, we don't get any buses into the village. The usual problems with uh, any rural sort of community, it's uh, fuel poverty, um, we are off the main gas supply. So we rely on electricity um, and oil brought into the village and liquid um, propane gas brought in as well. Um, so, you know, very heavy usage on um, carbon rich fuels. A significant number of our, our uh, people living in the village were spending more than 10% of their income on keeping warm. Uh, FTT Development Trust, well originally there was uh, four guys who um, were uh, started a thing called FREE, which is Fintry Renewable Energy Enterprise. So we, um, along with a, 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 a another, another group, um, put together the idea that we can actually put um, insulation within the properties within the village and that will drive down the carbon sort of usage. And then from that we said, well, let's start, let's start giving grants out to people to start doing things where we can help um, put money towards um, elements like putting in secondary glazing, um, draft proofing, it kind of mundane stuff, but it's the stuff that kind of makes a difference. A wind farm developer pitched up at our door one day saying, we're thinking of putting a wind farm in your local area. And that's actually quite a positive thing because people can actually look at one of the turbines and say, that's ours. That's the mechanism that's bringing in um, a lot of um, um, good things for our village and for our community. When they see what's actually happening, the fact that we were able to insulate more than half the homes, that two thirds of the houses are now insulated, um, we have able to put in micro renewables into the village, so reducing our requirements to rely on fossil fuels. It's actually about um, getting a renewable resource that we can use which isn't going to affect our kids and it's not going to affect the grandchildren and they'll be able to make use of it. I'm pro wind farms. I mean, I've always been keen on renewables. You know, I think it's, it's, it is the way forward. We, we, we have finite resources on the planet um, and we need to do something about production of energy um, that is um, renewable and is sustainable. So it looks like wind farms are here to stay. How many great angels do we need to protect Scotland's mountains?